for the first time in my life. I was unable to speak this morning for about 20 minutes. I don't know how to describe the feeling. Words can't describe it, but I I sat there at the computer from about 7 a.m. until about 10 a.m. when I um, hurried in and got dressed and drove into the office Thinking about everything I've learned and everything I've seen and watching a video that I saw up at InfoWars.com and also this morning, it was the top story on Drudge Report, big headline, Secretary of Defense, Authority to launch war comes from international bodies, not Congress. Now, I knew that they were doing this, and I knew this was the plan. And I knew that Obama, last year, said, I don't need Congress's approval to launch this war in Libya. I get it from the UN, which is as bad as it gets on so many fronts. To launch a war without congressional approval is treason, it is despotism, it is the purest textbook form of tyrant. But there's something above tyrant in the escalation of absolute evil, and that is... Complete and total espionage and the usurpation of our country. Obama is simply not becoming a Julius Caesar in 49 BC, crossing the Rubicon and declaring the Senate vestigial and ceremonial. That's is what happened here at one level. Without a bang, not even with a whimper. Caesar did it for what he believed the greater power of Rome. And it did lead to the eventual destruction of the empire before it swole. <laughs> this is openly being done by foreign powers, a foreign global corporate power known as the New World Order, the private megabanks. So the president is not just as bad as a Julius Caesar, a tyrant. Tyrannus. Terrible tyrant, king tyrant. Rex Tyrannus, king tyrant. It is beyond this. He is now, Obama and his cohorts and the Pentagon brass, are 100% convicted publicly by their own actions of absolute sedition and warfare against the Republic of the United States, and they should all be arrested. Senator Sessions, when the brass and the Secretary of Defense repeatedly said, no, we follow foreign orders, he should have immediately had the Sergeant of Arms arrest them all on the spot. And the center's like, ah, I'm breathless, I'm having trouble breathing. Because, ladies and gentlemen, that is what this is. I mean, this is like out of Star Wars, Emperor Palpatine saying, I am the Senate. I mean, it's, it's, it's beyond crossing the Rubicon. It is just flabbergasting. And, of course, I'm the extremist for saying that. This is as clear as... As clear as it gets. Uh, this is a very grave broadcast that we're about to engage in here today. In fact, the information we're about to cover is so important that I have cleared the decks. There are no guests today. Uh, I hope that you realize the information I'm about to cover is of the absolute greatest importance to not just the United States, 
but everyone on this planet. This morning, as I watched congressional testimony clips from yesterday, I was so blown away that when my wife came in and tried to talk to me, I, I, I told her, I cannot talk to you. And it was not drama. She, she'd never seen me in 14 years act like this. She said, what's wrong? And I said, uh, you see what's on the screen. And she went in the other room and watched it and came back and said, my God, do we need to get out of here? She said, everything in my gut tells me get out of here. But I've promised to stay in the United States. But just what hit me is that we've been right about it all, except that it's worse than we said. And it's so real. And it's so horrible. And it's so destructive and dangerous. And we know exactly where it leads because humans behave the same over and over again in history. We are forced to either exert ourselves to the maximum extent to reverse this. Or to run to the hills. And, and that goes for everybody. What is going to unfold on this planet? Is by its design constructed to destroy. And to pull down and to assault everything good. It is the final revolution that the globalists have talked about against humanity itself, against the nation state, against the individual, against every institution. By the globalist, against property rights, the family, everything. Free speech, all of it, on fire right now. What do I speak of? And we're going to play the video in its entirety, and I'm going to be stopping it and making comments. But here is the headline. Panetta, international permission for war, trumps congressional permission for military actions. Now, that's the headline that the video of Defense Secretary Panetta in congressional testimony with Dempsey and others said. But it's, it's worse than that. I mean, that's a quote. But they went on to say, Congress isn't even in the loop. And the senators begin to breathe heavy and actually flush red in shock. And uh, Senator Sessions starts saying, I'm, I'm actually losing my breath here i'm uh, i'm breathless because here are the generals the joint chiefs of staff and others all behind the secretary of defense and while they're saying this to the armed services committee their bosses they are all have a belligerent attitude and panetta over and over again, because I watched the compilation and then went to C-SPAN and actually found the entire hearing and sat there for an hour watching it, and it's even worse than the compilation shows. Now, I knew they were already doing this. And I'm going to break down, if you're a new listener, why this is the biggest deal ever. I already knew they were doing this, but to have them get before Congress that passes the laws, that controls the purse string, and declares war, and that commissions officers, the Congress is the boss of the military. And the Congress then hands a bill of war with direct orders to the top general only in a time of war declared by them, and then he becomes the commander-in-chief only during that prescribed piece of legislation. And that mission, because you don't want the president being able to become a dictator and declare war on their own. 
as we've seen thousands of times in history, hundreds and hundreds of times in the last 200 years in Latin America alone, sometimes three or four times a year per country, different generals declare themselves el jefe, the chief, the boss, el presidente, uh, leader for life. Presidents, prime ministers, Roman senators constantly would declare themselves military dictator. But this goes one further on this day that lives in infamy. Today is Thursday, March 8th, 2012, but as they said in the times of Caesar, beware the Ides of March, let the day of Wednesday, March 7th, 2012 be a day that lives in infamy. Just as last year, there was another date that I said was a major milestone when Obama put out a public letter from the White House and said, I don't need anything from Congress. Congress has no authority over war. Read the letter. We were linked to it in our article that we've written. Paul Watson's written on the subject. And he says, I do this through the authority of the U.N. and for the credibility of the U.N. So it's precedent. And so, in an act of brazen precedent, the Secretary of Defense, approved and confirmed by Congress, funded by Congress, came before the Senate and told them, you are not in the equation. And they'd say, but the Congress is over war powers. That's the Constitution. The Const and, and the military brass and Panetta said no. The United Nations and NATO and foreign bodies. And the senators are all looking at them because they all know this has already happened. But now it's being openly spoken. Now the world is being told, you're a joke, Senate. Suddenly, all over the United States, there are regular Army and Marine Corps checkpoints run by TSA on the streets. They call them TSA inspectors. Oh, the TSA inspectors are coming with the Army, just feds, completely out of their jurisdiction, engaging in a slow motion martial law rollout to acclimate everyone. And now, not just at the Kite Festival, but at other events now, the Army and National Guard and State Guard are at the events searching and directing people. Where I live now, two weeks ago it was Army and TSA in Dallas. Now it's in Austin, and it's in your town. This is it. Now, let me explain why this is beyond Julius Caesar crossing the Rubicon on January 10th, 49 B.C., leading one legion, Legio, The eighth of Gemini, Julius Caesar, General Julius Caesar, crossed the Rubicon River, the boundary between the Gaul province and the main province of Rome, Italy. To the north, and Italy proper to the south, a legally prescribed action forbidden to any army leading general. It was designed, and the prohibition was set in place, as the greatest law in Rome to protect the Roman Republic from a coup d'etat, internal military threat. Thus, Caesar's military action began a civil war. This act of war on the Roman Republic by Julius Caesar led to widespread approval amongst the Roman civilians who believed him to be a hero. The historical records differ about which decisive comment Caesar made on crossing the Rubicon. But the most historically referenced is the die is cast. Because he was committing himself at that point. Now, was he an enemy of Rome? He believed he wasn't. He wasn't working for a foreign power. But he was killed for it. In the Senate. But that idea of having a king, a Caesar, began to degenerate the empire.
Because if you don't have basic law, you have nothing, and corruption set in. This is far worse what we face because the generals didn't announce that the president had the power, which is on its face a total fraud and well known to anyone who's read the Constitution or swore an oath to it like these officers have. It's the first thing you're taught in ROTC, first thing you're taught in officer training, first thing you're taught in the military, first thing in your handbook is the chain of command. They know that. They know it's Congress controlled by the American people and the Constitution, Bill of Rights, Declaration of Independence. Let me state it clearly. This is beyond treason. This is invasion. This is war against America. I'm just reading to you from Encyclopedia Britannica. Caesar's act was an act of war against the Roman Republic. This is beyond that because Obama and his cohorts openly work for foreign mega central banks and corporations who have created this international body to cede domestic power to themselves. This is a international corporate coup d'etat against America. And all of these people pushing this should be arrested today. Again, I want to be very, very clear here with everyone who is listening to us on the radio across the United States and worldwide. Everyone watching us at InfoWarsNews.com. I am giving you 100% common law back to Rome over 2,200 years, common law in England, common law here in the U.S., the Declaration of Independence, Constitution, all of it. And I'm going to play these clips coming up in the next segment. When you have the Joint Chiefs of Staff Chairman, the Secretary of Defense before the Senate, and they're saying, hey, you haven't come to us to want, launch the Libya war. You haven't come to us to launch these new operations in Syria. If you want to launch these wars, you've got to come to us. And, and by the way, the Congress wants these wars, these proxy wars. But they're like, but, but, but we've, you, you've got to get authority from us. And the Secretary of Defense, the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, talking to their bosses, the Congress, that control the purse and the war powers, tell them, no, we get it from the president who gets it from international bodies. And they say, the UN, NATO. Now, see, the same thing's happened in Europe. If you look at Europe, they're telling them the 25 member states of the EU can't get out of the euro and that private mega banks are now appointing the prime ministers and presidents and raising taxes and cutting benefits to pay off debts created by the bankers. And so it's in Forbes, it's in The Economist, it's in the Financial Times. Oh, the technocrats are unelected and they're setting up a global private corporate government they know best. Open world government out in the open. The, and, and it's the same private groups. Those countries over time have had globalist agents put in who've signed more and more authority over to these NATO bodies, IMF, World Bank, OECD, all these groups. And now those groups are saying, okay, you no longer as a country have any authority. Europe is being told this, and you can't get out. That's all a fraud. It's all been done by fraud. So they're dissolving the nation states and transferring to these corporate bodies. I mean, imagine these senators who are haughty and full of themselves on so many fronts, but it's the separation of powers, as the founders did. They separated the powers so you couldn't get a dictator. And so if somebody tried to become one, other powerful people aren't going to want to have their power taken, even if they're immoral. There's very few moral up there like Ron Paul. Kucinich had a warped value system, but was a moral guy who believed in what he was doing. He's been removed. He, he just lost. He, of course, was leading 10 Congress people suing Obama over the illegal Libya war. Congress sent him letters and said, you got to at least get authorization, forget a war declaration. They said, no, I got the U.N. giving me authority. So this isn't like Julius Caesar crossing the Rubicon and saying, I'll do whatever I want 2,000 plus years ago, 2,050 something years ago. This is worse. This is Obama financed by the big mega banks, by foreign interest. You see... It isn't really new to have foreign corporate interests take over your country. 
The British East India, the Dutch East India Company ran entire areas of the Pacific, entire areas of Asia, China, India. Corporations did. Their own militaries. In fact, it's, 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 it's the... It is... The model that came out of Italy from its nation states into England 500 years ago. It is the black nobility model. And British troops and others would be landed to serve these private corporations. And that's what the New World Order is. That's what Cecil Rhodes said it was, wrote books on it. That's what um, Futurist, he wrote more nonfiction than he did fiction, H.G. Wells wrote about. This is a global corporate socialist combine run by the ultra-rich to shut down free market for everybody else but them. And laws and bureaucracy to shut everybody down but them, they're all exempt. And so we now have the spectacle of the Senate and the House, the Congress being told, you don't matter. And they're like, yeah, yeah, we do. We The Constitution, you swear an oath to that. And it says the Congress is in charge. And they go, no, you're not. And then it goes, no, you're not. And you watch the generals, they're getting off on it. Their body language is, you bet, we're in charge. Folks, this is exactly what happens in Guatemala or Nigeria. I mean, it's here. And uh, it totally freaked the Senate out. There's multiple senators and House members. Breaking news, Representative Jones puts Obama on notice. Representative uh, Walter Jones, Republican North Carolina, introduced... H concurrent resolution 107, which calls on the House and the Senate concurring to do the following. To put the president on notice of articles of impeachment for violation of the Constitution and treachery against the Republic. This is, this is not rhetoric, this is an act of war against America. This is a extremely grave time that we're in right now. I am begging you to listen to me carefully because I'm going to have Paul Watson put out another article in the next hour or two on this subject with congressional phone numbers. We have to have a plan of action. You know, when it comes to saying call Congress, tell them get rid of the TSA, when, when enough Congress people get harassed by TSA, they are having hearings and legislation to point out that they cannot engage in law enforcement activities, they're not bonded sworn officers, that they've got to stay within the Constitution. It takes time, but you can force something on Congress when there's enough pressure and when it's morally indefensible. And I could use a lot of other examples, but on this subject, Congress gets it. Congress knows that they are the largest, most diverse body representing the states, the House and the Senate. A lot of them are corrupt, a lot of them are bad, but they understand that when the military comes before them, who've all, they've always been the bosses in the chain of command. The Joint Chiefs of Staff, the chairman, always say, yes, sir. They all, uh, you know, the, the Secretary of Defense would never. This would be the equivalent, I hate to use gross analogies, of going up to a mega church in front of 5,000 people and pulling your pants down and defecating in front of the altar. I hate to use a gross analogy, but that's what this, I mean, this is so over the top. This is so 100% treason, but beyond treason. This is treachery. This is invasion. This is war against the Republic. I was just reading to you from the Encyclopedia Britannica on Roman law and the 49 BC crossing in the Rubicon by Julius Caesar which was an act of war against the Roman Republic, and ended up destroying it. And he was a popular super general. This is beyond that. This is a group of financial interest that have gotten control of the presidency, gotten control of most of the governorships, gotten control of many House and Senate members, gotten control, gotten the government to sign on to their 1.5 quadrillion in fraudulent paper derivatives they created in the last 12, 13 years. Since 1999, Glass Steagall being removed. So we're already in economic fraud. We're already in economic bondage. And these global banks openly fund Agenda 21 and a post industrial world. They openly fund the shutdown of the U.S. and tax incentives to move what's left of industry and business offshore. 
and to raise our taxes while lowering them in zones they control 100% like communist China. By the way, I've got an article here about China's parliament unveils dissident detention powers, secret arrest, secret detention, modeled after the NDAA, and it's being decried by Reuters and international groups. But see, there's no moral high ground anymore. America wants the image of liberty and freedom, the example, not perfect, but still the best there was, is now the example in obesity and cancer and porn and death and illiteracy and evil and war and torture and secret arrest and every form of degeneracy you can imagine. Now, continuing here. This is the gauntlet being thrown down. What is the gauntlet? If you go back thousands of years, even to the beginnings of the Byzantine Empire, and then you go through what's Spain and Portugal today and other areas, many times your armies, your city-states, wouldn't want to kill each other because that would make you internally weak, say in the case, in the true story of El Cid, great film based on real history. I suggest everyone watches it with Charlton Heston. And the Moors are invading. And at that weak point, one of the other city-states in Spain, what Spain today, comes in and says, you will give us this city. And, and the king says, ancestrally, we've had this city for hundreds of years. And he says, fine, I will meet you with our armies on the field of battle here. And the king says, let us not do this while our enemies are invading. I know you've done this thinking I'll just give in to you right now. Let it be decided by champion." And very well, take your glove off, throw it down, boom, the challenge is on. And it cannot be refused. Now, let me tell you what the brass did lined up behind Panetta watching this video. It's up at InfoWars.com in, in our articles on this subject. They took the gauntlet and they just threw it down in front of Congress. And I watched over and over again the body language of those, gen of those generals. They, were, they were, had slit eyes like wolves staring at those senators with total contempt. And Panetta sat there in a very friendly but mafioso way, just going, no. And they'd say, but Congress, you know, officers are commissioned by Congress. We hold the purse. We hold the war powers. It's the Constitution. And Panetta says, no, UN and NATO. And the senators are like, what? But see what happened last year. When Obama said, I'm launching this war against Libya, but it's not a war, they said, but you got to get congressional authorization. He said, no, I don't need it. I get it from the U.N. He didn't say the president can do this, because the president can't. He said, I can do it because the U.N. gives me the authority. Paul Watson's article at Infowars.com, the most important article we've ever put up. And we're going to have more on this subject. Has the links to the White House press releases where he says, I do this for the credibility of the U.N. He does this as a lawyer, as a constitutional lawyer, to say there is no constitution. The U.N. commands the American president who created the U.N., Rockefeller Carnegie Foundation, right here in the U.S., the Pentagon, intimately involved. Not for America, even, as some tool of control. That'd be bad enough but as a thing to transfer the powers of the republic into and then incrementally build it out and train everybody to accept it. And now they're to the point, they've got blackmail files on all these senators and House members, hit teams ready to kill those they don't control, that they don't have dirt on. And they walk in there and they say, we're going to launch a war in Syria, and it doesn't matter what you say or do. And the senators are like, just like they were eight, nine months ago in Libya, they're like, well, we'd like to authorize it. You know, we're, we're military industrial complex funded. We're, we're all for doing this. That's just, you got to get authority from us. And they go, no, we don't. We get it from the UN and NATO. And the senators are like, but that's, that's unconstitutional. It's not just unconstitutional. It's treason and treachery and a dictatorial Caesar-esque power grab directly out of a textbook, directly out of 
episode three Star Wars, when the when which is based on the Roman Senate from history, when Emperor Palpatine takes over, and they come to arrest him, they say you're you're taking on all the powers of the Senate as a dictator. You're under arrest. And he goes, it's treason then. And they go, but the Senate won't stand for this. I am the Senate. That's what Caesar said. This is beyond, in fact, he said, I am the Senate once he took over. They said, but we're just a rubber stamp now. Well, I'll keep you around as a debating club, but I make the ultimate decisions. I am the Senate. He said other things like, I came, I saw, I conquered. Hillary said the same thing about Libya. Laughed about it, a soft little goblin-like woman uh, dominating the republic, using us to carry all these crimes. She said, we came, we saw, he died, speaking of Gaddafi, who made a deal with him and let the West come in and liberalized everything. Oh, you're out, Al-Qaeda's in. Do you understand that there's no Bill of Rights, there's no Constitution, there's no nothing under this. And a foreign power, a foreign power, which is this globalist corporate central bank, global governance consortium, commands our president and our military. This is, this is the minimum, what I'm saying here. Do you understand that? And I, at, a, at a certain fleshly human level, I don't like throwing the gauntlet right back down, but a, a challenge of this nature must be responded to. Because every time a country does this, it goes downhill quickly. They will rob and steal and destroy every bedrock, family, private property, religious freedom. Everything's gone, folks, and it's going to happen very quickly. Giant wars, everything. Okay, if they get away with this. Now, the good news is there are a bunch of senators and House members saying start impeachment procedures. You've got a call. In fact, I meant to ask you guys before the show, because they, they, they got a bunch of numbers, but they alternate them to keep the public from knowing what to call. Check the latest toll-free and toll-switch numbers for the House and Senate. Give them to me so I can have the next but Test them, because they, they don't change their numbers. They have like four or five variants that they rotate that are being answered whatever day. We've got to put articles out. We've got a call for the military. I'm calling for the military, especially officers. I don't care if you're a master sergeant uh, or if you're a commissioned officer or you know, a, a, a colonel. This is the time to write letters to the president and to the editor. This is the time. I mean, you'll charge machine gun nests and fly in you know, unmaintenanced helicopters and aircraft and go and do all this and carry packs 40 miles and live off the land for a month. You know, to be in special forces, and I know you're good people, you'll do all this. Do you have the moral courage that I have, some soft person, to risk your name? Yeah, they may try to court-martial you. They may try to arrest you. Probably not if enough of you come out. But I'm risking my life right now calling for this. But it's what's got to be done. All military that are not treasonous traitors to this foreign takeover, this war against the republic, and you got Congress people coming out saying this is illegal. And Obama should be impeached. Folks, he should be impeached if he said he had the power to wage war and probably arrested. But the fact that he says it's for a foreign consortium? You never give the president the power to launch wars or anything on his own because a foreign group could pay him off or blackmail them. Or they could have been brought here and raised as agents. Our founders dealt with this. Europe always dealt with this. This is Our founders were historians who spoke four or five languages. They wrote this to protect us from this. It's happening. It happens everywhere else. Our criminal, illegitimate government now gives aid and comfort to the communist Chinese as they pass an NDAA identical to what our Congress and Obama signed. And look... They have contempt for the Congress because they know they're a bunch of little traitorous creatures as well. Who would give the president the power to secretly arrest and wage war anywhere in the world, including against citizens domestically. I mean, Congress, you, you, you gave him this power, which is illegitimate, but nevertheless you did, which was a conviction of all of you that voted for it. Hundreds didn't and is a in conviction by their own hand and their own statements of the executive. This is not the U.S. government. This is Encyclopedia Britannica says, the moment Caesar crossed the Rubicon with his forces, he became a traitor, 
and an enemy of the Roman Republic and was waging war against the Republic. The Republic is collapsing right now. This is this. You could mark this as as the New World Order firing 357 rounds directly into the chest of this country. And if we don't put the Republic in the hospital right now and get surgery going right now, this just shows us how sick we already were. And I'm going to put this in an article. It is time for military officers to speak out, which is not even, that's all you can do. Look, read your oath. Read what you were charged with. I mean, it, it absolutely says that you will follow the Constitution and that you swear an oath to the Constitution. And of the commander-in-chief in time of war, when they declare the war, when the Congress who funds it and runs it and, and, and approves the, the, why didn't the president pick his generals? Why does Congress, why, why do officers have to be approved and have letters of recommendation that your family's been here a long time? Folks, you couldn't become an officer in the first 150 years of this country once it got started if your family hadn't been here forever. You weren't even trusted to be an officer if your family didn't get here in the first few boatloads. Now look at what we've turned into. Now look what we've become. It's pathetic. You've got these criminal gangsters who've stolen tens of trillions of dollars and all the corruption and shipping guns to Mexico, waddling in, slapping the Congress in the face, going, listen here, Mac, you don't run jack squat. And the senators are all like old peacocks fluffing up, getting angry. But I'm sure they're, again, the globalists wouldn't have made this move if they didn't know that they think they have that House and that Senate. Saying, we're going to launch wars. I told you folks that when they got away with that Libya war without congressional approval, the sky was the limit. And now look at it. The minimum that the military can do, and the police and all of you that claim you sworn an oath to that Constitution. The minimum you can do is put out public letters, shoot YouTube videos. I, I mean, if I was a military officer, I would have the troops form up in front of me. And I would and I would read them the Constitution, and I'd read them what Congressman Jones has said, and I would play them that video of of them, and then go look. The Congress is in charge. You know this. You see what's happening. I'd read them out of the Encyclopedia Britannica about Julius Caesar, and I would march down to the headquarters and say, "Why is the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and the other generals in there like a bunch of gangsters telling Congress that they no longer have any authority over military actions and that?" Not the president. Again, that would be treason and dictatorship and Julius. No, no, no. That's worse than Julius Caesar. Julius Caesar was a patriot compared to this. No, I, I mean, I'm getting chill after chill right now. Probably because I know I'm risking my life doing this, but whatever. I mean, who? somebody's got to stand up to the emperor being butt naked here. I mean, this is ridiculous. Wait till I play the clips. I mean, they're up at InfoWars.com. Pentagon launches desperate damage control over shocking Panetta testimony. The United States has ceded control of its affairs, international bureaucrats. And even in their comment, they go, oh, it's misinterpreted, but we do get our authority from foreign groups. So it's a PSYOP. We want world government, but it doesn't exist. And then we've got all the quotes and the video and the article. But I'm calling on the military, officers of conscience. To speak out, and, 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 and if they try to court-martial you and call you in and you're saying, look, I have to go public here, Congress is now not even being consulted on war when I swore an oath to this, and Congress will get behind you. This is the Achilles heel of these guys. They've gone too far. There's already a bunch of senators and House members saying, begin impeachment. But if we just sit here and kind of get intimidated and, oh, well, the military follows these orders, and, and I mean, listen, military... You heard Colonel Schaefer here two days ago, the guy that ran the Hunt Bin Laden unit, a real patriot, special forces, everything, saying, no, this is treason, this is illegal. Treason? It's illegal. Time to start saying no. I'm here in front of God and everybody, three million people right now, saying, military, speak up. The pen is mightier than the sword. Point out this is illegal and say that you are under Congress, except under declaration of war. We'll be right back. All right, I'm going to give the number out for military, active duty, enlisted, 
non-commissioned officers, officers, I want to hear from you because I know I'm right. I've had endless congressional scholars on. I, I had congressional scholar and advisor and former federal regulator Bruce Fine on. He said this is treason. This is takeover, the Libya situation. I've had Colonel Schaefer on saying it's treason, it's illegal. I mean, he's still in the military saying this is treason. But it's worse than treason. It's espionage. It's treason if you're an American and do this to your country. It's beyond treason when you do it for a foreign power. And it is mind-blowing. I'm going to play the clips next hour. The video's up at Infowars.com. It's a seven-and-a-half-minute clip of Senator Sessions going... Well, you've got to get approval from us to be involved in military operations against countries. And they go, no, we don't. We get that from NATO and the U.N. He goes, but Congress does that. The Constitution says. And they go, we now follow the United Nations. I mean, you can go watch the video, go read the quotes. And it goes on and on. The senators start going, well, wait a minute. You know Congress funds you and we commission the officers. And, and, the mil and, and the brass are looking at them like they're the enemy. I've never seen, and I've watched hundreds of these hearings, I've never seen the generals act so criminal. I mean, we had the last Joint Chiefs of Staff chairman saying no to this just a couple of years ago. I mean, I've never seen them behave like this. They have really gotten a crew of crooks. They are arresting journalists by the hundreds, and it's just a minor footnote. Oh, you, you talked to a whistleblower on government corruption, you're going to jail. Uh, I got Wired Magazine, the feds are announcing they'll take any .com they want and seize it any time because they control the register outside of courts, even for political reasons. They're erasing videos critical of the government on YouTube. I'm getting lots of lavish death threats that my time's coming. The state police in Austin are calling up my affiliate trying to get me off the air. Because the green light's been given, it's time to butcher America. Well, I hope all of you that serve evil understand that the horrible country you're going to turn this into, you did it, idiots, for a bunch of globalists that sit offshore who've always hated this country. Thanks a lot for killing America and wrapping all your treason in the American flag. You make me want to throw up. But there are those of us that know this was once a great republic, and it will rise again. Just know that. They've already killed the country. They've already butchered it. We're dead already. I use the analogy of Star Trek Wrath of Khan where Spock goes in to fix the reactor and Captain Kirk tries to go in and the Dr. Bone says he's dead already. You're not going to save him. But you see, a country is a spirit and idea, so it can be resurrected. But it's we're walking dead. The, the republic is basically collapsing right now. It's already hit its knees. There's thousands of cuts. But the, the, these stabs are so deep. And the contempt before the Senate going, no, we don't come to you for wars anymore. Obama put a letter out last year and launched a war. I'm going to give you the number to the switchboard. Everybody needs to call Congress and say, what is it going to take? Start impeachment now. This is treason. 202-224-3121. No one is safe. Nothing is safe. 202-224-3121. Due process. Our country, everything. This is foreign corporate invaders. This is tyranny by lawyers, where they come in, set up structures, start transferring power, money, and influence, and then now they're just fully transferring and going, not only we don't need a declaration of war or even an authorization, you don't run anything. Kind of like the feds have told the states they have no authority. Well, see now, the federal government's being told it has no authority. It's all the UN and NATO run by private central banks. See how that works? 202-224-3121. I'll give you the number for the military to call in in just a moment.